Okay, uh, James, I'm I'm really keen on this topic. I'd love to uh, maybe you know have a have a chat at some point and and yes. touch, maybe in touch. Let me let yeah, me I look you up and let me look you up in LinkedIn and see if I can find you here. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I know we're near the top of the hour, and you probably have to shift over. Um, I am. I, I both had a, a very dear friend of mine and spiritual leader in many communities in San Francisco uh, passed away in a car accident yesterday. And um, I'm also simultaneously producing uh, the first, I think it's the first uh, virtual burn, global virtual burn, uh, Burning Man uh, this weekend that started last night. So okay. I've got a, a bit of things going on. So if I don't get back to you immediately, just yeah. know that like this is a dear to my heart and this is my life's work um, yeah. and there's plenty of people other people that have been working on this for a long time as well we're we're i i are you based in phoenix no you're not based in phoenix yes right? sir yes you i am global yes, strategy sir, venture advisor executive producer that's right yeah that's you? okay i'll send that's you me. i'll reach out to you with linkedin yeah. And I see we have uh, only 38 mutual acquaintances or connections, at least. What a well, small we'll, <laughs> we'll fix that, dude. I, I sometimes have um, two, 3,000 plus with people. Yeah, so yeah. if you're into this topic, I'd love to get our numbers from 38 to 3,000 ASAP. Yeah, I, yeah, I see. Uh, yeah, Salim is a common friend or common connection. Yeah. I'm a burner too, James. Of course you are. I, I, I sense that from just hearing you speak before I took my mind off. Yeah. You're, you, you, if not natural born burner, then I knew that you were in culture. It was, it was yeah. very obvious to me. But thank th th thanks for confirming my bias. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'd love I to, to learn more I about what you're back, doing. I have to get back myself. I've only made it to Black Rock City once, but. All right. Well, uh, hey, you guys. It's called remoteburn.org. It's happening right now for the for the rest of the weekend. Okay. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. Remote burn. Yeah, remote burn. Burn.org. Um, yeah. So it came out of the oh, Africa burn and mid burn, which uh, is the Israel regional. Yeah. And uh, they called some of our peeps and said, like, we want to go, you know, virtual. And then the last, well, I got involved the last week. I think this was two weeks ago when the phone calls happened and said, like, let's do this um so it's fucking off the hook it's happening real fast real time it's fucking rad and the and the wow. digital nation concept uh we're test driving it with uh sonic nations uh right now okay. so that was the first container that we created with sonic nations to come from a, from from an origin of music and um sonic native people okay. Okay. And um, then we're gonna we're gonna build into other nations um, as we go towards the metaverse uh, in September. But um, it's temples and nations. That's what we're building for the next four months in culture. James, what is it exactly that you're doing again? I didn't um, understand all of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 hard to understand, uh, and I've gotten that feedback from a lot of people. I I apologize. Um, so there is a container for a virtual burn that's happening online that started last night at um, okay, got 5 that. p.m. PST, and it goes through Sunday, and it's global, and it's online. Okay, got it. And do, it's, it's, do there's something else you do, though? Yeah, but that would take a lot of time. We can, we can do that oh, offline. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we <laughs> sure can. Um, but yeah, this one is just like, a test drive, you know, R&D towards um, Burning Man's theme of metaverse uh, for the burn that's not, that's not happening in Black Rock City, that's happening online in September. So we're just like scaling up and building community and building ex shared experience for the next four months. And this is kind of like the first, second prototype real-time training boot camp for three days. And it's global. We had like Two, three thousand people already in the gate, and I, I kind of expect my my um, aspiration is a hundred thousand by Sunday, like burn burn level population by Sunday. A uh, BRC wow. burn. How how will this tie into uh, the main event this year? Uh, TBD. Mm -hmm. Roberto, we don't know. I mean, yeah. uh, they didn't call me. I didn't call them. Uh, so if, if this is successful, which I think it will be, 
then maybe yep. we'll have a conversation. But um, at this stage, I just want to be very clear, snapshot on right now at this stage, um, we, it's CBD. We have no idea. And we're not in um, you know, comms right now. Yep. Yep. Got it. Either way, not, not adversarial, not you know, pro, yep. neutral, and, and, and supportive of org and culture and community. So I just want to make that clear. Like this is not uh, anything but um, you know, honoring uh, the tradition and the legacy of of the culture and community, and yeah. and giving it a, a truly global um, opportunity to shine and yeah. engage. It's really beautiful. The the crew that we're working with, uh, it's it's multiple birthdays in our crew, and one of them is, is a woman called Nicole Patrice, who's out of Detroit originally, um, and it's her birthday tomorrow or today sorry it's her birthday today and she's brought in crew from detroit that is just fucking making magic happen like the old school fucking techno where techno came from detroit yeah. and they, they got the old schoolers from detroit on the decks today tomorrow and the next day and paris and new york and all the rest are coming online so this like i said it came out of africa burn and midburn but like now we're bringing in places that have you know hip-hop has never had a a place in brc really you know, yeah. it hadn't hadn't shined there, um, and it's really beautiful to see like how much they respect the principles of the culture and how much they live the culture and the principles that they have for their own organizations around social justice, environmental justice, uh, women's rights, uh, all of this. I mean, it's it's the real fucking street cred. Uh, I'm 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 speak a little fast, but like you know, it's it's real city stuff. It's urban shit. You know, it's Detroit. Yeah. It's coming yeah. from the heart. Yeah. And uh, and then it's blending with Burning Man culture. And it's really um, interesting. Interesting. I'll, yeah. I will do my best to drop by. And I apologize, but I need to. Yeah, we got bounce. To bounce. Something else. Mona yeah. Morir, James. Uh, a real pleasure. Likewise. Likewise. Uh, Take care. Care. Much love. Have a great Thank weekend. All. All right. Okay. Um, bye. See you all soon. Bye. So, so I just registered and then look where I am. I'm, I'm in the website. So, so apparently now there's like a talk about Green Earth Pathways. Yeah, nice. Where are you at, one year? Sorry. Where are you at? Where are you at, bro? Um, I'm 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 based in Dubai. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. yeah Can we yeah. connect? Uh, I'd like I've, to connect with both you guys. Yes, I've added you on LinkedIn. We have twenty-eight yeah. mutual connections. Okay. Okay. On the low side. Yeah. All right. We'll I'm gonna that. get on LinkedIn then, or or Facebook. Are you guys on Facebook? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I'm full yeah, I'm up on Facebook. Facebook. Uh, I'm I'm over five thousand. Oh, can't what's take the best more. to? LinkedIn is best if if you can LinkedIn, do it easily. LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah. Because James, you know, I was just thinking of my friends. They they uh, founded Unify.org. Have you heard of them? Unify. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Which friends? So which speaking, friends? Um, Adele. <laughs> yeah. Adele. And he's a. And Ram. He's like. Yeah. He's yeah my Adele. brother. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I. I was thinking if you guys already know each other, then I don't need to um, introduce you. But you, know what? you, um, should, yeah. you should be, you should, because we need to do some work together and we have not been connected recently. So if you, if you're feeling called to do that, um, that'd be awesome. Cause I, I haven't, I haven't well, spoken to him probably for either. two years since uh, trans tech in San Francisco conference, like two years ago. So oh yeah, for sure. I mean, he just married, um, you know, like my sole parents daughter, yeah yeah so, oh, really so we're family nice yeah we're so family so tribe for sure and yeah. um they're just doing some really amazing things and they're just growing so quickly and they're yeah. also um you know connected with the resonance group too right and whole and then whole bunch of other groups and you know david pramal and everyone else and it's just like it's time for everyone to collaborate right yeah no matter yeah. how big or small one is it's so important you know, and, you know, and even with my documentary, James, it's just going to be so freaking mass, you know, that I think we'll be um, able to help each other in, in a way where it's going to be fun and collaborative. Yeah. Can you guys see the chats? I saw a chat just come on. I can't read it, but it said, like, we're ending the unconference or something like that. What did they say? Can you read that? I think we're ending. They're, yeah, they're ending the conference. The whole conference. I think they're ending the conference, so... Just for your oh, yeah. day. Yeah, it resumes next uh, Friday. Okay. Well, um, let me say this. Um, I think that Vancouver's a really important node 
And actually, I think Dubai is a really important node. And I can say why, if you guys have a minute. Yeah. Yeah, I have a minute. All right. So, um, so September, we're, build, we're kind of writing chapter one of a really long book of like a hundred chapter book. Um, and that chapter is focused on um, Reno, Nevada in September being kind of a reverberation of the Big Bang. Of, and and, the, and in, in the Big Bang 2 or the Big Bang Squared um, is a call to the ingenuity and innate um, creativity of the human species to wake up and be Woo! what we've always been. Yeah. All right. Amazing. Yeah. So that project is, is, is again aligned with the Burning Man theme this year, which my life is, seems to be aligned with the Burning Man themes every year. Uh, that project is called <laughs> The Universe Exploding. Uh, so The Universe Exploding is a culture bomb uh, aligned with the multiverse theme of 2020 of Burning Man. And it's centered in Reno, Nevada. Um, as the center of kind of like the Big Bang. And um, we're, we're lining up uh, Rio, Reno, and New Orleans as other creative cities um, to explore the future with, um, often work in threes. Um, so we've had a conversation with Rio, our, our main point of contact in Rio, there's many others, but what came naturally was the Museum of Tomorrow, which was built in 2015, for the 20, wait, 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 I, I'm sorry. It was built for Rio plus 20. No, it was, it was built after Rio plus 20 in 2020, 2012, but for the Rio Olympics in 2016. And that started in 2015. And it's got this great, the portal into this museum, experiential museum, is the origin of the universe. It's an eight minute immersive uh, journey through the origin of the universe. Whoa. Yeah. And um, we had them, we had the head of innovation and the head of their labs, it was the same person, on a call with the Museum of Now out of Berlin um, a week ago. And we thought about, and am I pronouncing it right, Monier? Yes, yes. Monier, we thought mm -hmm. about um, the Museum of the Future in Dubai, Dubai. Mm -hmm. uh, and the World Fair as kind of the ending point, if you look at like, beginning, middle, and end to a month long, uh, we, we're calling museums temples of culture now. Mm -hmm. So a experiential edutainment um, tour for a month of the, of the temples of culture. But um, since we didn't, we've got ties to Dubai, but um, as a placeholder or maybe just, it was, we weren't sure of like the cultural, if it was gonna resonate or not. Um, our friends um, out of Wonder Fruit Festival in Thailand have a new camp from my futurist coach friend um, that's called the Embassy of the Future. So mm -hmm. right now in planning stage in August, um, it will start with a, um, you walk in the front door to the Museum of Tomorrow and in the portal, eight minute experience of the origin of the universe and then probably exit through the gift shop uh, to get to um, the museum of now at some point and the embassy of the future at the end of the month. And we're designing for it to um, align with the Olympics that had to be canceled and have it be like kind of the Olympics of culture and impact uh, and maybe get that much attention. Aspirational, no doubt. But um, to see if the Olympics, since they're not happening for sport this year, if they could happen for culture. Mm -hmm. um, and possibly working with the UN and World Economic Forum and, and others. But, well, um, yeah. well you, here we you, are. Yeah, so, so, so you, you touch on so many things, and I, and I think like, like the more you talk, there's more potential synergies. Um, so, so first of all, in Dubai, um, that, that festival that you're talking about, it's Expo, so it's actually been postponed one year. So it's going to start now in October 2021 um, to, or is it? Uh, yeah, October 2021 is when it's going to start. Um, and, and with regards to, to Dubai, um, if there's like, um, you know, I'm sure like, like typically Dubai is, is you know, full of uh, like a young crowd. Um, so, so such a concept of like, you know, you know, like exploring culture and music 
and, and the, the intersection of, of those um, is would definitely, I think, fare well with, with the crowd in Dubai. Um, and, um, and, you know, you just need, I guess, the right partners there to sort of, you know, make sure it's, uh, it's executable on the ground. And then yeah. you also you also mentioned World Economic Forum, so I'm happy to you know connect you because because I'm affiliated with them. Maybe you are, but but I mean in my case I'm I'm part of their youth organization, their youth community called the Global Shapers. Yeah, um, you're a Global Shaper. Okay, I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So if you do you know yeah, my do you know my friend? Um, um, I'm sorry, just this mo moment. Um, do you know Think University? Do you know Mark Vanuj? from Think University. He spends quite um, a bit of time in, in Dubai. Or do you know um, Lucien Ternowski or uh, who else? Are those anyway, shapers? so Lucien's a shaper. Um, Mark is, uh, I think he's on some council. I forget which one. He spends a okay. lot of time at like uh, the, the, the annual Global Futures Summit, I think that's in Dubai. The Global Future um, Council, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then, um, Benjamin um, Butler is the futurist that I was talking about. That's my coach and my friend and my co, co, I don't know, co-creator. Uh, he's on the Future of Computing Council or Future, okay. yeah, Future of Computing okay. Council with um, Yuri Van Geest and a couple of others. Um, okay. So I'm not a shaper. I'm not affiliated in any in any okay. any way with West, yeah. but I just have a lot of friends. Uh, inside yeah. and at okay. various levels of the yeah. ecosystem. Yeah, yeah, great, great, great. Yeah, so if you do want to connect with with, with uh, the, the the young community, I'm like happy to to connect you. There's a, I think there's for sure shapers in um, in uh, Nevada and uh, California. And another thing which also resonated. So so I work in, in government consulting, and and most of our work in Dubai is actually for the Saudi government. Wait a minute, dude. Did we meet? Did we meet at WEF in 2019 at a penthouse party? <laughs> no, no, you mean Davos? No, no, no. I haven't been to. No, Davos. we didn't. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry. Okay, no. Yeah, yeah. I met, I've I only met, been to sorry, the regional that, the West. That yeah. profile. That profile sounded like a conversation that I had um, late night in in Davos. The only time <laughs> I was there. Sorry. Okay, Go ahead. Okay. Nice. Um, yeah, so, um, so, so, so since you're talking about culture, um, I don't know if yeah. I mean, you've, you've seen the, the new direction for like, Saudi Arabia, uh, the huge focus on culture. Um, you know, they have yeah. the Ministry of Culture um, spending way a lot of money. And in fact, my current client um, is, is yeah. actually, you know, it's all about culture. Uh, it's it's yeah. like a royal commission of Al Ula. Um, have you heard of them? Have you heard of Al Ula? Yeah, yeah. So, so you can check it out, and, and it's it's basically like like a, like a small county in northeastern uh, Saudi Arabia. Okay. And, and their whole you know value proposition of the city is centered around tourism, hospitality, heritage, nature, arts, and culture. Um, so so wow. and, and Annually, what they have is there's like a festival called Winter Winter yeah. at Tantura. It goes for like three months, where they have all these different you know music and cultural events and festivals and singers and all of that. Um, so, so I think if, if, you're, if you're talking about culture and, and festivals and then Middle East, uh, like definitely Saudi Arabia would, would be an interesting, uh, I mean, it would be ambitious. I mean, maybe, maybe you have like a perception, but honestly it's changed dramatically in the past uh, few years. You know, um, the only thing that I can say, and this is with all due respect, I, um, I'm trained as an MBA in international management from Thunderbird University, which is now part of Arizona State University, but I've never spent time in the Middle East. And um, I have friends that have spent some time there, but I know I don't know the culture. And mm -hmm. my friends that have done more work and t spent time there um, have, have given me the, the heads up that there is a shift. I mean, I saw it from the Sovereign Wealth Fund. I saw it from the cultural thing, obviously, when um, that uh, journalist was offed by whoever, I don't even know the whole story there. A lot of people kind of just said, fuck that shit. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna be just real. I hope that this feels okay, but um, I'm kind of punk rock. I'm, I'm, I'm from Seattle, man. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So um, I, I, I can't really hold it back to, I, I, I can wear a suit, I can, I can, I can, I can hold my tongue. But um, from my community's perspective, they were just like, oh yeah, Saudi's you know, turning the tables and that thing 
happened and a lot of people were just like mm, i don't want to be associated with that so yeah, fair enough, um, fair enough. I, I would only i, I, I would only that. walk i would only and that's been a bit and and i understand there's been a lot of changes so i'm not saying no not, actually i'm saying yes i'm very interested um with the caveat of i need more education on is that issue is that landmine uh, of of culture like sewed up is there is there a story there is there an answer there um you know what i'm saying i'm not maybe i'm not yeah, articulating yeah. it right but uh, i don't want to I, I don't want to walk into a war zone or have to like defend um you know engagement somewhere when you know it was just an invitation and, and thought that it was a, a cultural opportunity that yeah, would yeah, be yeah. beneficial for the world yeah, no, fair, fair enough, fair enough. Um, I mean, I guess, I guess my perspective is maybe a bit different, um, you know, yeah. because because my clients are are the government, and, and I and I yeah. I'm part of these organizations, and I see the way that they think. Um, yeah, and, and I also think like, I, I guess, I guess, you know, okay, yes, I mean, I mean, what he did is 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 absolutely, you know, like like you know, worth condemning for for sure, hundred um, percent. Having said that, you know, again, being and working with these governmental organizations. I, I've seen how much commitment they they are doing towards towards change, and and then yeah. changing the mindset of, of the locals as well. How much they're investing in all of these events. Now now some might call it you know okay whitewashing, um, which which might be the perception of the world. Okay yes they just want to improve their brand image. Okay sure but but then but then who doesn't do that right like in the world yes. right um, as long yeah. as it's um, it's it's also benefiting the the locals. Um, so the way I see it, that that it's 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 win for the locals as well, and I think that's what's what's important. Um, you know, sure, it's it's you know, yes, um, you know, improving the perception because yeah. this whole time it's been really bad. Um, but but there's there's tangible value add for the local communities as well. Can can I just mention real quick that um, yeah. I didn't mean to put you back on your heels or put you in a defensive position of oh, yeah, no, your okay. work or your clients or any like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I was just trying mm -hmm. to be um, expressive of what I've been told and I said that I, I haven't yeah. spent any time there and I don't know the culture. And I would yeah, yeah. very much like to, if it made sense, um, you know, join hands with, with people that are evolving. And, mm -hmm. and, and again, knowing that I don't know the culture yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So I need, I need, I need coaching. I need hand holding myself. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if, if, the, if, if we did, we were to determine that it was the right context and intention would love to, um, you know, in the right way as co culturally appropriate, um, for everyone, you know, invite people into, um, you know, possibly very possibly, that is a fucking massive story, right? Like their sovereign wealth fund, like kind of like moving from petroleum to Uber, you know, renewable energy and, and a cultural economy versus extractive economy. I mean, if, if, if the right um, intention is behind that, that is possibly a fucking world game changer. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 and like, like, I mean, I, I, I've seen like, like they are really, you know, focused on, on, you know, like, like diverting away from, from oil. They're huge focused on tourism. Um, like the projects that I work on on a daily basis are, you know, like, like today I'm, I'm working, I have a call coming up for like, um, uh, like a college for tourism and hospitality that's from France to be set up mm. in, in this small county in Saudi Arabia, you know, just because they want to upskill their locals. Um, in, yeah. in these topics, right? Because that's part yeah. of their, yeah. their ambition. Um, yeah. And then I have another project that's related to, okay, they're coming and they're, they're realizing that, that their education system as well, like on, on a K to 12 level is also, you know, underdeveloped. And, and, and they, they understand that the, that the mentality of, of some of these, these people is, you know, that they're not very accepting. So they're like, okay, you know, as a consultant, they're like, okay, you know, come help us identify what type of after school extracurricular programs we can embed into these schools uh, in order to make them more you know like tolerant of, of, of cultures well why don't why can't they be on the front lines welcoming these these new tourists um, yeah. so, so when i see these projects like i am comforted and i see that that okay this is where they're in splashing so much money um, yeah. and investing in, in, the, in the local community 
Um, so, so my perspective is, is again, like super different than, than I guess most of the people. And, then I, and I can't blame most of the people's perspective. Like from the outside, you see, you know, that one story that, that makes headlines. Exa exactly, um, exactly. And, and I can't so, blame anyone. Um, so again, again, I think that a lot yeah. of the, the, the uh, work that I'm doing right now, a lot of the work that I did when I was a consultant for Burning Man, you know, actually, you know what, it's just actually dawning on me now as I've, as I've really embraced my creative and artist again um, over the last five months is like narrative design and co-creation is like the most key thing. Like not, not as a whitewashing, whatever, it's like story embodying, story living, story um, generating versus like the outcome that is wanted from it. Uh, real time off co-authoring, maybe mm -hmm. is another way to say it, is like more important, and I, come, I, I was in Silicon Valley for 20 years, um, more important than, than building a tech platform or whatever, that just tech for tech's sake, like actually authoring, co-authoring a story with community and then delivering a service or a product or whatever, like that's, for me, that's the incubator accelerator is just narrative creation, co-creation. That's the most important part in this day and age, especially when the fucking world just shut down five, no, three months ago or whatever it was, March, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so you mean, okay, so, so, so what's your definition of co-creation? So who's like you're, you, you like, so co-creating it with the community, you mean? Community as like, you know, they, they yeah. Could, yeah, is that what you well, mean? Well, okay. well I, I, I will just say from your own experience, you showed up here today. My name was on a, um, a, a global unconference um, and it had a slot for a half an hour. And then my phone died and y'all carried the conversation after my two minute intro, just saying like what the, what the container was. You carried it until I was able to get home and plug my phone back in and uh, you know, catch the tail end last five minutes-ish or 10 minutes-ish of the half an hour conversation. So the co-authoring for me is like, you know, my, what I'm good at is creating titles and containers and then letting, allow, you know, inviting in creativity and co-creation, stepping back mm -hmm. out of the way, listening. And if there's any nudges along the way that I say, oh, this is kind of where I'm hearing things going or, or whatever from my perspective, but I don't know. Mm. It's, it's, it's about whatever you guys want to do. That's kind of the, my jam. So when yeah, I say yeah, co-authoring, yeah. co-creating, it's like from yeah. my perspective and you, it's a prism. So you, ha you'll have your own, in my experience, you'll have your own experience in that. But um, from my prism, from my perspective, mm -hmm. um, what I have been practicing and I'm really good at is just creating a space a container, I could say it a bunch of different ways, but a container of space and giving it a name and a directionality and then stepping out of the way, leaning back and listening and, and then trying thing. to support yeah. and invite in more creativity and invite in more partnership, invite in more everything, resource it, mm -hmm. um, but really get, get out of the way once, once the container is set and then let the culture generate itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something yeah, like that. Enough. Yeah, it's, yeah, a, it's yeah. a near yeah approximation. Yeah, Mona, do you have something to say? Because you're you're hanging with us and you're in for the ride, and we haven't heard from you lately. I just want to. You know what's ahead. really interesting? I, I'm just listening to your lingo first of all, and I'm super um, curious about the global shakers and all of that you're talking about. I'm like, hey, you know what? I know like so little about that world that yeah. I was like just curious to listening um, because you're part of something you know Munir I think yeah. Munir Ray yeah. how, however I pronounce your name sorry yeah, um, you know and you're part of a community we're all part of our own communities and it's so beautiful right. when it comes to collaboration that you know what I have an amazing community too and it may not be this or that but it may be exactly what you're looking for you know what I mean like and so it was like this moment that I'm like, okay, I could leave right now, but if I stay, you know, maybe I could be of service, you know, and that's what 
Burning Man is about. You know, we're we're here to give, to to share, to co-create, to collaborate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I attended a, like a call earlier today and it was all about, um, there, there was this lady that's talking about, you know, how we can utilize this time. Um, and then she, she, she put it in a very nice way. She was like, reach out to, to people and ask them, how can I serve you? And then take yeah. this time to sort of build like, like connections and, and relationships that, that you'll, um, you know, um, benefit from. Um, after when, when things uh, go back to this sort of this new normal, you can say. Um, so, so, so I found her talk to be quite inspiring uh, because she told us, she's like, okay, in the beginning, you know, as a first step, you need to mourn. So you need to accept, you know, that, that you know, certain things aren't the way uh, that, that you imagine them to be. So that was, that's the first phase and like acceptance. And then after that, she was like, you know, you know see everything as like an opportunity. Uh, so she was talking about a story where, where you know, her um, strength is, is in marketing and like, you know, um, sales and I think business development. So she was reaching out to, to companies and telling them, look, pro bono, um, how can I serve you? And then, you know, they, they would be so surprised at, at, at the support and help that she would give, you know, for free. And then in her head, she was like, okay, look, I'm doing this, well, we, you know, and I don't expect anything uh, like out of it. Um, so, so definitely this, this, this recurring theme uh, today or from this conference of like serving others and, and like selflessness, I think is, is very, uh, very powerful. Yeah, I love that. When it, yeah. I, I'm curious to know about the Global Shakers. You're part of the Global Shakers. Yeah. What yeah, is that? So, yeah, so in a nutshell, it's, 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 and it's right. shapers versus shakers. Um, oh, just shapers, for clarity. Yes. Yeah, shape, shaping. <laughs> versus, yeah. Shape. That makes and and you, you, you wouldn't know that unless um, I, I clarified. No one yeah. would. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. But that, yeah, so, that's, that's the terminology that World Economic Forum uses. Go ahead. Yeah, true. And true, by the way, yeah, go Mona, ahead. I just mm -hmm. was inspired. I'm a, I'm a musical creature. And I just put into the text um, a Smith song. I thought it was Shoplifters of the World Unite and Take Over. But it, the song that I was looking for was um, Hairdresser on Fire. Um, oh my gosh, I heard about that song. I heard of that yeah, song. Yeah, so I had to go look that one up and find it. I put it in the chat. <laughs> Thank I'm a big you. Smith fan. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry about that. Yeah. Just so I had to interject a bit. Yeah. yeah. No worries. Mom. No yeah, so, so I guess uh, shapers and shakers, uh, those terms can be used interchangeably. Uh, we, sometimes we call ourselves shakers because every time, you know, we get together, a lot of shaking happens, you know, uh, like late night. <laughs> Like we party hard, um, but but essentially it's um, it's a youth initiative of the World Economic Forum, and we have two main uh, main mandates. The first one is to like self mobilize youth for impact. So um, it consists of like hubs all around the world, and these hubs consist of youth. They get together, they identify what their community needs, and then they come up with initiatives and projects to help their community. And the second thing is is the purpose it was created was to ensure that youth have a voice at the table whenever decisions are being made. Hence the, the reference to, you know, that, that party in Davos, um, where, where, so basically Davos is that annual meeting for the World Economic Forum. And usually that's, you know, attended by like the top, top, you know, top CEOs of all the big companies, uh, presidents, you know, ministers. And then there's like global shapers as well, who are, you know, people between the ages of 20 and 30. And, you know, it's, it's so powerful to have youth there because, you know, you know, the, 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 the chairman of the forum, you know, a few years ago, he was like, okay, look, you know, I do this event and then, you know, these are all like 60 plus year old people that are making decisions that, that, that you know, for the, for like the next 20, 30 years. So, so, so youth is an important stakeholder in all of these, you know, decisions and then discussions. So he came up with the concept and basically for every World Economic Forum event, there is about 50 or so uh, global shapers that get to attend. And not only do we attend as just, you know, regular participants, but we're also given, you know, like important roles to be like speakers and panelists and like workshop facilitators. And we definitely have uh, like a platform to really, you know, speak our, our voice. And I think um, it's, it's really, um, again, it's such a powerful community. Um, you know, we're in about you know, maybe 450 cities all around the world. Um, in fact, I, I know I know a couple from Vancouver, um, and um, it's really one big family. Like, if you were to name me a city, I could probably give you a name of a person I know there, uh, just because of this uh, community. Wow! So, can anyone be a part of that? 
Um, so, so I mean, there is criteria. Um, you know, you have to be between the age of 20 and 29 at the time of your nomination. And then every uh, hub has like specific, you know, application process. So some people say, all right, I need you to show me a video. Some people have like a regular application. So it, so it varies. Very cool. I'm so glad that there's something out there like that. Um, yeah. I don't yeah. fit the age category, but that's okay. <laughs> Me neither, but Mona, there's there's probably a program where uh, I'm 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 having my fiftieth birthday in um, in June, um, so. Uh, Ooh, happy birthday! If it, yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> if there's not a program already that exists within WEF, um, let's create one because um, they have their. I always look for the most flexible. Um, point in an organism or organization and from what I've uh, deciphered from recon and a lot of study is that the Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution um, their lab basically in San Francisco is that it's uh, right now it's we had conversations with uh, some of the folks who work there um, generally they have like you know uh, organization Salesforce, et cetera, et cetera, like big software companies that do like special projects or um, have their, their employees from like their CEO staff, like go do a, um, a fellowship within. But um, we explore like, what if you're not a big corporation, but you're influencing the future? What, what type of relationship could you have with World Economic Forum through this lens of the 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 center it's called center for the fourth industrial revolution it's it's based in the presidio san francisco and it's pretty much as i understand it wef's lab uh and it's focused on nine technologies um emergent emergent and um emergent technologies from precision medicine to blockchain to ai to virtual reality i don't think virtual reality is a, a specific of the nine but it's it's definitely you know, considered. Um, I can't name all the others, but I think that's the place to come through and maybe through the, um, you know, uh, the, the, the founder of WEF um, made a big manifesto this year about multi-stakeholder um, manifesto. That was kind of a big deal because yeah. uh, it, it all the people that show up there haven't traditionally been multi-stakeholder and it's been shareholder uh, culture right it's ceos it's 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 capitalism it's been a it's been a shareholder based quarterly returns type of thing with with a lot of government leaders as well but the kind of the big deal and and Monier, I'm sorry, I just forget his name right now, but the, the founder of WEF. Uh, Klaus Schwab. Say it again. Uh, Professor Klaus Schwab. Yeah, Klaus Schwab. So Klaus came out, or Mr. Schwab, Professor Schwab came out this year and said like, no, that we're, we're creating a manifesto that it actually has to be about all stakeholders, not just fucking shareholders for the future of, of humanity. Yeah. And started enrolling CEOs and government leaders in that mentality or that culture that everything needs to be considered um, while determining or making, making, you know, the decisions that they make. And this is, again, this is like the biggest com companies and countries on the planet. He was basically enrolling them, if that terminology doesn't offend anyone, in the possibility field of... Um, you know, that all stakeholders, not just shareholders, not just capital had to be considered in their decisions. And Monia, I'd, 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 I'd ask you to um, extrapolate on that or enhance what I said, because I don't even know what I don't know. But it was a big deal, I think. And pretty bold. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, um, so, 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 so just on, on uh, the earlier point about communities at the WEF, so, so there are other communities, so it's not only about the global shapers. Um, so there's another um, group called Technology Pioneers. Um, so if you work in the space of tech, um, that's one community to keep an eye out. Um, so I shared the link on the, on the group chat. 
Um, and unit room three, yes, okay, just give us just two more minutes. Um, and then another community that they have is called the, the Schwab, um, uh, Schwab uh, Social Entrepreneurs. So if you consider yourself a social entrepreneur, you can also, it's called actually the Schwab Foundation for Social Entrepreneurs. Here, I'll type it up. Um, that's another one. And then, and then there's the other one, which is Young Global Leaders. So this is uh, typically for like CEOs between, if you're under 40, um, you have to get nominated by someone um, to be a Young Global Leader. And all of those communities are all very well connected um, and uh, super, super um, powerful and useful. And then just about Schwab, um, so um, yes, um, I'm, just, I'm just trying to, 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 to look at the uh, notes that I have um, in, the, um, in the, uh, my, my phone. My phone, yes, so Professor Schwab, okay, there's, there's like just six, uh, six takeaways that I'd like to, to share with you from Professor Schwab. Um, the first <laughs> one is, is use your privilege as a purpose. Okay, so again, goes back to our point about, you know, uh, serving others. And, then, and very interestingly, earlier today, even like, like there was another session about the purpose economy, um, which is another fantastic concept. The second takeaway is, um, again, related to what James, you were saying, um, you know, Professor Schwab always says, serve, serve your shareholders as well as your stakeholders. Um, the third point is uh, we need to become and move towards a society of sharing and caring. And then, uh, you know, versus the consuming. Um, and then the fourth one is um, there's something called contact theory to, to make the boat go faster. <laughs> I'm not sure what that is. I don't recall. And then uh, treat everyone with respect as equal in a shared space. Um, so, yeah. So this was uh, some of the, the, the takeaways from, from Professor Schwab. Like this was actually a couple of years ago, not the, the manifesto in, uh, in Davos last year or this year. All right, guys, very nice talking to you. Um, thank you so much. Let's uh, keep in touch on LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram. I've already followed you, Mona. And James, I've already I was just writing you. the notes. That's awesome. That's great. We'll keep yeah, in touch. I just, I just shared my phone number, which is 415-235-9640. I know they're kicking us out of this room. But um, come hang out at Remote Burn and bring your friends or right. just call me. Um, it's remoteburn.org, right? Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah nice to share. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.